Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here and welcome to another thrift store transformation where I take an object from the thrift store and turn it into something completely different using polymer clay. In this episode, I'll be taking this porcelain goose figurine and turning it into a prehistoric baby bird. I have no idea where this idea came from, but I went with it and now I have a giant baby bird in my collection. And then before we get started really quick, I just want to remind everyone that I will be announcing all of the giveaway winners at the end of this video. Now, without further ado, let's start the transformation. All right, let's turn this goose into something. And really quick, as always, all the materials that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you'd like to purchase anything. So as with all of my thrift store transformations, this one was really hard to figure out what to transform the original object into. I really didn't give myself a ton of time to think about it. I decided to make this video a thrift store transformation on Monday when I went out to purchase this goose and I started sculpting on Tuesday and it was done by Wednesday night. So I was in a bit of a time crunch this week, but I hope you enjoy the process anyway. Now, my initial thought was to turn this into another fish with the goose head being the tail and the body being the head. But then I was like, I already made a fish. Let's try to do something different. Then I thought maybe dinosaur and I didn't really like that for this. So from dinosaur, I stayed in the prehistoric period and went with this random prehistoric bird idea. And just to address this before we get any further here, I know a lot of people think that I'm just covering this thing in clay. You could cover anything in clay and make it into whatever you want, but the whole point here with these videos is that I have to work with the composition of the original object as armature. That's the challenge. I can't modify the original piece at all. I can only add to it. I cannot take away. All right, now that we have the Goose's body uh, covered in Super Sculpey, it's time to make the feet. And I played around with a couple different ideas for the feet here that you just saw, but we settled at this style right here. And I just elongated the original feet a little bit with some clay, and we're just finishing the base of those. And then here I'm going to use some Sculpey Primo in black to make some claws. And I'm just going to shape those out here, rolling out a ball of clay like so, and then curving it at the end to get that nice claw shape. And then once all of these are shaped out, I'm going to pre-bake them. And then once they're hardened, I'm going to simply press them into the clay. And the reason I'm using Primo for these is because when baked, Primo is much stronger than Super Sculpey. And since these claws have pretty thin tips, I need a clay that won't chip and break off easily. And then there you just saw, I just added some bacon bond to each of the toes and I pressed the claws into the clay like that. And the bacon bond is just reinforcing the connection. And then here I'm using my dental explorer tool to create some wrinkles and details on the feet like that. And then of course, because this is a prehistoric baby bird or hatchling, the feet are larger than they would normally be. Uh, these end up being the most exaggerated feature on this bird. And then here I'm just adding that flattened snake of clay to the top of the feet. And this is going to be down feathers. I'm just adding that texture right here with this tool, pressing that out, trying to add the indents randomly, and then I'm going in with my Explorer tool to further detail everything. And that's looking pretty good. My confidence is growing. <laughs> now we're just going to repeat that same process on the other side for the other foot. Now, believe it or not, especially with how simple of a design this thing is, I struggled a lot with it just because it is so different than what I've been making over the past few months. I had to consciously tell myself over and over, this is a completely different style. It's its own entity and it has nothing to do with anything else you've made. Just make this thing look like a bird. And this happens to me a lot, especially when I'm shifting gears like this. I tend to get so caught up in a particular style that when I branch out and try to do something different. I'm like totally lost. <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone else can relate to this, but it's all about being well-rounded and pushing yourself as an artist to expand outside of your comfort zone, make what you wanna make and explore your limits and creativity. You're not always gonna be 100% satisfied with your art. I mean, as artists, honestly, is there a time when you're 100% satisfied? 
maybe for some of you, but for me, when I look back at anything I've ever made, I will always find room for improvement, and then I just take that thought and apply it to my next sculpture. <laughs> Alright, as you saw there, I was kind of experimenting with how to make the wings, and then I decided on having them kind of out like this, like the bird is hungry and it wants to eat, so I just wrapped a piece of 12 gauge aluminum wire around the goose's neck and then secured it in place with some Super Sculpey. And that really embedded the wire and prevented it from moving. Now I'm just adding some more texture to that down and then adding some more clay to the wings, shaping them out further and getting them to a point that I like. Then once the wings are shaped out, it's time to add some details to them. I'm going to make this sort of pin feather texture here with my um, color shaper and dental explorer tool. Adding some more clay here, adding some more details, and then um, finishing off the bottom half using my spoon tool and dental explorer. Now we're just adding a snake of clay to top of each leg just to sort of expand the fur a little bit or the down and it's looking pretty good now it's time to do the head and the head was way more complicated than it needed to be let's be honest um yeah so to get to this point it took a minute but you know i just added the added the aluminum foil around the goose's head and then covered that in clay now we're just adding the beak and the reason why i left the original mouth of the goose exposed is because I didn't want to cover that because air would build up inside there when it's baking and then it would blow out another part of the sculpture and I'd have a huge mess and a crack so I had to leave that open. And then after using my large ball stylus to make the eye sockets I just added the eyes just two balls of clay and I am just blending the edges into the rest of the head. Now we're going to create the slit where the eyelids meet and I just did that with a snake of clay and detailed that out with my dental explorer tool like so and then just repeating the same process on the other side Then once the eyes are looking pretty good, I just want to extend the beak a little bit. So I just added another piece of clay and I am blending that in like so. And he looks better with a longer beak. Now we're going to give him this fluffy little mohawk that goes down his head and his back. And I'm just covering that and the majority of his head with this nice little feather texture. Very light feather texture. And we're just texturing everything like crazy still. And this part is always, always very satisfying. I always enjoy doing fur or feathers in this case. And then we're just doing the rest of that mohawk down the back here. And then adding more details, like so. And then I'm not going to add the feather texture to the entire body because I want this to sort of be a hatchling, kind of in between a hatchling and a fledgling age-wise. And so I'm leaving the large part of his body um, smooth, just exposed skin that hasn't developed feathers yet. So that's why I'm not detailing everything. Then I just added a, another piece of down around the neck here bulking that out a little bit and texturing that as well. And it's turning out. I can see the light. Okay, now let's give him a tail. Adding the final feathery details, some nostrils, and then once those are done, I'm going to brush the exposed skin portion of the body with some cornstarch. This acts as a 
abrasive to remove fingerprints and smooth out the surface. And here I'm just brushing the areas that I did not add cornstarch to with clay softener. And once it's baked and completely cooled down, it's time to paint. I'm using full cart autumn leaves and barnyard red mixed together to create this nice fleshy color like a hatchling. <laughs> and I just watered that down a little bit and I'm just creating a sort of wash over the surface, adding some dark areas here and there, trying to keep it natural, trying to maintain the translucency of the clay. Then once that's down, I'm going to start prematurely painting the feathers. Um, I go back and add some more of that fleshy color to other areas before I finish that. And here we are doing that to the eyelids, like so. And just layering up that wash until I get the opacity that I'm happy with. And that's looking pretty good, just adding some around the eyes as well, just in case I want to keep that exposed. Then for his beak, I'm going in with some buttercup that I tinted with pure black and brown. And I'm just going over the entire beak. This is slightly watered down and I'm brushing the excess off with a paper towel. That's the exact color that I wanted. I was really happy with that. Now we're going to use um, that color tinted just a little bit more with brown to paint the feet. Now it's time to finish the rest of the feathers. And I wanted this to have a very natural color palette, sort of earth tones. And when I finished this thing, I realized that it looks very similar to a baby robin. So maybe this is a prehistoric baby robin. <laughs> Then we're just going in with a fine paintbrush here to paint the head and all the areas where the dark color is right up against a lighter color, like that. Then I'm just painting the eyelids, sort of washing it over those and exposing some of that fleshy color. And then for the next step here, once that base color is dry, I am just dry brushing some dark brown that is a little lighter than the base color over all of the details. Then we're getting even lighter by adding some titanium white to our brown and then dry brushing that as well. And this is when those details really start to come out. And then this is the lightest I get with it and I'm just focusing on like the face and the main areas. Then it's time to paint the down on top of the feet. And I believe this was the same color that I dry brushed on the rest of him. And then for some final steps here, we are just darkening the nostrils, adding some more dimension to the body here with some watered down brown, and then highlighting the down over the feet with some pure titanium white, and then a little bit on the face and wings. And he's done. Our prehistoric baby bird, baby robin is complete. Let me know what you think in the comments, and then of course be sure to like and subscribe. Now stay tuned to see who won the giveaway from last week's video. And that's a wrap. I hope you like my giant prehistoric baby bird. Is it my favorite sculpture I've ever made? No, but there's always next week, so that's okay. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the giveaway winners. I received over 3,000 entries from all over the world, and I had to pick five random winners. So here we go. Our first winner is getting the pretzel magnet, and she is Sophie Stark. Next, the winner of the Baby Sal figurine is Anna Calloway. Next, we have the Mini Slime Monster, and the winner is Alondria Reed. Next, for the Reaper Magnet, the winner is Leal Upick. Hope I'm saying that right. And then last, but certainly not least, the winner of the Bride of Frankenstein Magnet is Scott Kryltich, or Kryltich. Butchered that very badly, but you're the winner of the Bride of Frankenstein Magnet. And there you have it, the five winners of my 
my first YouTube giveaway. Congratulations and thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers. I will be reaching out to each of the winners within the next day or so, so you can claim your prizes. Thank you so much to everyone that entered. I, this was such a success and it definitely won't be my last giveaway. And then in other news, before we close out here, I just wanted to mention that I want to start a new series on my channel called Sculpt This where I turn your two-dimensional artwork into a sculpture. This was inspired by Nerdy Crafters Art to Sculpture Challenge, where she does the exact same thing. I will be accepting ongoing submissions for this, so there's no deadline to submit artwork. All you have to do is just share it on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter with the hashtag sculpt this ace of clay, and you're entered. I'll be picking one random post to sculpt for each of these videos that I do, and I'm hoping to do the first one this month. I'm not sure when, but it's going to be this month, and I'm hoping to do a lot of them in the future. So, as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Ace of Clay, and I will see you in the next one.